Uh, my name's Graham Webster. I'm a right winger here at Montrose. Uh, I've been here at the club for, for 10 years now. Um, I'm a sales manager at a printing company in Dundee, Trade Print. Um, I've been there for five years now as well. So you coming to Montrose? Uh, it's quite a long one, to be honest. Um, I started off football um, at a young age, like most of the boys here. Um, I was full-time at Dundee um, for about four or five years from the age of 16. Um, so I got the opportunity to play for the club I supported as a boy, which was, was obviously a dream come true. Um, it didn't quite work out there for, for probably a number of reasons, um, but I thoroughly enjoyed my time there. Um, obviously, like I said, got to play for the club and, and play for the team that I supported as a young boy that, that my mum and dad were very proud of. But um, yeah, moved on from there, came to Montrose um, 10 years ago now, which is obviously <laughs> Quite a while, um, and to be honest, not really looked back. Um, it's been it's been a thoroughly enjoyable time at Montrose, and we've been through the the highs and, and certainly a lot of lows as well. So yeah, it's it's been good, and I thoroughly enjoyed my time here. So yeah, we we'll sort of talk about those sort of highs and lows. Clearly, the journey even for ten years at the same club hasn't been steady. No, it's definitely not, and. I think we always go back to it's that day where we had that playoff against Broda, how different the club could have been um, and the situation we, we probably wouldn't be in now had we lost that game. So you kind of always go back to that game, but I think through the years you've seen progress since obviously the gaffers came in, um, we've steadily sort of been on an upward curve and, and made playoffs quite a lot of the, the years that we've been here. Um, but. Yeah, hopefully a lot more highs than, than lows that has been in the recent years anyway. Um, and obviously we're doing well this season so far, so long may that continue. And this this season so far, again, a bit of a slow start. You know, seems to be picking up, moving in the right direction. What have you noticed in the team over the last even two, three months? Yeah, I mean, like I say, the, the slow start, I think, typically we, we sometimes go the other way. We have a fast start and we start to tail off a little bit, but... Yeah, we had a bit of a slow start. Um, we had a bit of turnover in players, I think, over the last year or so. Um, a lot of players that had been here for a, a number of years have then moved on to, to new clubs and we've also brought in new players as well. So sometimes it can take a wee bit to bed in and get used to the new players and then get used to everyone that's that's playing. So I think we certainly hit the, not hit the ground running now, but we are we are getting there. We are starting to play a lot better and we're playing a, a steady formation a steadier team as well, so it's it's obviously helped, um, and we've we've picked up some good re results along the way as well. And dare I say, I use the word senior player with all these <laughs> you know sort of youngsters coming in. I mean, how how have you contributed to support supporting and getting them up to speed with the standards of League One, which seems to increase year on year? Yeah, it does. It is getting harder every year, and there's there's no two ways about that. It's, you see the teams that we're playing against on a week to week basis now. It's it's certainly getting harder, but I think I certainly struggle with the the senior player um, sort of name because I, although I'm I'm 30 years old, and I played a, a number of years. I still like to think I'm I'm young enough to not be a senior player. But um, yeah, you obviously try to be that that sort of voice in the dressing room I'm, I'm a bit quiet of a quieter personality in the dressing room probably but certainly we'll try and help the younger players as, as much as possible um, and certainly being that sounding board for anyone that, that needs it. And speak, speaking sound. of sounding board who have been your main influences in your career both on the field and off off the pitch? Uh, I think the typical one obviously you look, you look to your family and you look at your, your mum and your dad and Obviously, my dad's got a lot of traits that I'd like to think that I have now that he's passed down. Um, on the field, I mean, there's been loads, loads of players that, that I've obviously played with over the years. Um, but, yeah, obviously, looks at, looking here at Montrose, probably Watson and Tez, I've been really close to them over the years and we've kind of formed a real bond over the, the 10 and 10 plus years that we've all been here. So, um, Stevie as well into that bracket. But... Yeah, that, I don't think there's anybody in particular that really shines out or, or strikes out in terms of one person. I think there's been a whole host of people across across the years of playing football. Um, obviously, my family's been a massive part in that as well. So, yeah, I couldn't really say just one person that's been my biggest influence. Is that the same with your interests? 
What was that? Is, that? is that the same for your interests? Yeah, you could say that. Yeah, I mean, in terms of what I do off the park, um, away from football, I like to golf. Um, I play at Kunusti. I'm a member of Kunusti, so I'm quite lucky to have that. Uh, I'll have an open championship course on my doorstep. Um, I like to play pool with, with somebody who used to be at the club, Matty Allen, a few times throughout the week when we get the chance. Um, but other than that, really, yeah, just golf, work, a um, bit of football as well. So, yeah. There's a lot to pack in, in in sort of a week in the life of Graham Webster. It is, it is. And, and work's, work's starting to get really busy now. I've, I've kind of worked my way up at, at the position I'm in. Um, I used to be a, a sort of customer service rep as such at, at the printing company, but I've now sort of built myself up a wee bit, which is good. So it's, it's getting busier and the, the nights are getting longer. Um, but yeah, it's been good. Um, and obviously when I get the chance to play golf, it's great. But obviously with the bad weather and the, the colder weather now, we, we try to stay away from it. But but so. when you do, especially with the colder weather and the dark, you know, the darker nights, what music do you... For music? Um, believe it or not, I used to be the the sort of music DJ here at Montrose, which some people might find that quite surprising. Um, I've kind of taken a back step now because I'm getting to that senior player level, so I'll, I'll leave that to, to Bruni to do. Um, but music, total variety, anything, um, mostly dance and, and sort of house music, to be honest with you. Um, I've been to Ibiza a few times over the years, so I've kind of got that background. So Any names that you can... Churn out for anyone whose record can remember uh, that type of music? Oh, no, God. It's just a variety. It's a bit of everything. Um, yeah, there's probably some names that people don't even realise or that that's out there. But I'll, I'll listen to anything. Anything from dance, rock, pop, anything. Just, sh just shaz Shazam it if you, yeah, if you aren't sure. Yeah, Spotify's perfect. They'll create pl playlists for you, so it's fine. What about movies? Movies, uh, do, do you know what? I'm not a massive movie person. Um, I mean, I do like uh, James Bond, I like James Bond, those types of movies. Um, yeah, other than that, I don't really watch movies to be honest. With you. I'm more a series and documentary type of person. So, Any particular ones? Uh, what was the most recent one that we've watched? Documentary. We watched the Beckham documentary, which is really good actually. Um, those types of things that are actual real life documents, like we watched the Tyson Fury one not long ago as well, which was really good because as a sort of footballer, a part-time footballer, you kind of relate yourself to some situations that they've been in, mm -hmm. um, especially Tyson Fury with all the, the issues he's went through and, and obviously Beckham, we've, we've not had careers like he's had, but um, yeah, there's there's certainly been situations that you start to relate to when you when you watch these things, which is good. And in terms of real life, in terms of places, holidays that you've been, what, where stands out? Where would you like to go? Uh, I mentioned before, I've been, I've been to Ibiza a few times back in the day before I met the missus uh, with the boys. Um, we've we've been to America. We've been quite lucky with holidays. We we done California for three weeks, which was yeah, that was pretty special. Um, and we're getting married next year, so we're currently planning our honeymoon. So we're we're looking at the Caribbean just now. So. There's a, there's a lot of planning going on at the moment, so... Well, to be continued then on that yeah, one. Yeah, definitely. I think, like I say, the Caribbean somewhere I've never been to before. So it's like, we've we've kind of always wanted to go there. Um, but obviously with, with the wedding, that's costing so much money. <laughs> so if, some, so if, the, if, the, if the Mo fans decided to just come out with some comments, with some ideas, would you take them on board? Yeah, you could do that, actually. Yeah, you can start firing them across, actually, because, um, yeah, we're... It's not that we're short ideas, but we can't really decide on a specific place. So if anyone's been somewhere that they could recommend, then definitely, yeah, get fired them across. Julie noted, if none of you were playing football and you were all just a bunch of mates catching up, who would be talking about their exploits as a comedian? Oh, a comedian. Oh, there's a few candidates. I'm going to say Bruni, because... Bruni is a very funny person and obviously I've known Bruni for a few years now and yeah, he's, he, he keeps the boys entertained on the bus and the dressing room and stuff so um, yeah, Bruni's definitely a stick on for that. DJ? Can I say Bruni again? I'd like to say myself but I can't because obviously I'm that senior status now I can't, I can't take the claim for that but Bruni's had a good go at the, the DJ over the last few years and he's been quite good and, and Midge actually had a had a go at it as well and he's quite good at it, so 
Probably one of them too. Entrepreneur, who's got the big idea? Nah, it's easy. Big Watson, Big Paul. Um, he's obviously got his own company, uh, Projector, that's doing extremely well at the moment. And he's he's constantly thinking out of the box and, and things to do. And he's got that brain, that sort of entrepreneurial brain. So, uh, yeah, Big Paul. Who would be the TV movie star? TV movie star. Don't know about a movie, but reality star Blair. Um because <laughs> uh, he just looks like that Love Island type and he would enjoy that sort of stuff. So, yeah, maybe not a movie. I wouldn't give him a big movie role, but definitely a, a TV series, a, a sort of Married at First Sight or Love Island type thing. <laughs> Who would you go for life advice? Who's the wise man? Oh, good question. Uh, probably Watson, actually. Watson and Tez. Um, actually, even Dillo. I'd throw Dillo in the mix as well because... Uh, they're um, yeah, they're always there for, to speak to about even if it's not about football, just as just any advice that they could give you because they've obviously seen a lot of things over the years with them being uh, nearly forty years old. But <laughs> yeah, those lads, they, yeah, you could definitely bounce ideas off them. And last one, who would be the f a future coach manager of a successful Scottish team? Uh, for, don't know about successful, but um, Steezy would definitely give that a go. Um, he kind of fancies himself with the the coaching side of things, and you can see that. And uh, you know, I'm I'm joking a wee bit with Steve's you, but um, yeah, it would definitely be him. He's he's definitely got that sort of coaching mindset and all the all the buzzwords that the the coaches use these days. And then, last of all, what message do you have for the supporters? Uh, just a massive thanks for your continued support. To be honest with you. Um, obviously, I've been part of the club for for ten years now, so it's uh, just great to see everyone turning out week in week out away from home and at home so just a massive thank you and, and please continue to support us throughout the season because we'll give it everything this year and, and hopefully we'll have something to cheer for at the end of the season.